Guten Tag. I, I suspect we, we should start. Um, first of all, I would like to thank you all for, for being here for this um, little, but I hope intense discussion on the Entwurf einer historischen Architektur by um, Johann Bernhard Fischer von Erlach. Uh, I would like, first of all, to thank everybody who helped me organizing this thing, particularly um, all the staff at the Department of um, Gestaltungslehre and Design that I started to chair um, in September. Um, and I would also uh, like to, um, to thank our sponsor, so Wienerberger and the Ziegeverband, and I take the opportunity to thank uh, Mr. Uh, Jorn Markner and, Norb and Mr. Norbert Pommer, um, who, are he who is here with us today. Um, I think uh, their contribution was very important for realizing this event. I will very quickly uh, try to explain why we um, organize this, although we are not a um, department of architecture history, neither a department of architecture theory. We are actually a department committed to teaching design, architecture design, and I am a, um, an architect, a practitioner. So all, all of these that uh, I will propose as a topic for our conversation of today is said from the point of view of somebody who actually is an architect and is confronted on an on a everyday basis with problems of contemporary architecture. Um, the last thing I should mention is that uh, although the event is called 300 years uh, and forth, actually it's 301 years uh, because the end forth was uh, published in 1721 and although as soon as I was hired the year in, in September 2021, we, we did our best to try to fit uh, uh, the event into a rather packed uh, academic calendar, uh, COVID-19 uh, decided that anyhow it wasn't the case. So um, we are here and we excuse with, um, with, with Johan Bernard Fischer von Erlach for this slight lack of precision. Um, why uh, we, I am interested into, uh, into this uh, book is um, quickly said, and I, and I will try to be as brief as possible, and I will present a couple of uh, suggestions for um, the discussion later uh, with our guest. Um, Fisher's book is a collection of, is subdivided first of all in five books, three about the um, architecture um, of the past, one about Fisher's own architecture, and one book uh, about vases. Um, the book is uh, very slim in terms of text. There's six, seven pages of text, both in French and German. And then uh, the book is uh, composed of 86 uh, big uh, folios uh, describing the architecture of the Jews, Egyptians, Syrians, Persian, Greeks, Romans, Arabs, uh, Turks, Siamese, Chinese, and Japanese. So it's quite a wide-ranging scope. And, um, and the book starts predictably with two engravings about the Temple of Jerusalem, but then it immediately moves to uh, the seven wonders of the ancient world. And uh, I think the Seven Wonders plays a crucial role into Fisher's 
um, construction uh, because very simply the seven wonders are seven. So they provide a plural starting point for a theory of architecture. The, this I think is of fundamental importance particularly compared to the conceptual operation uh, at the beginning of modern architecture, so the theory of um, Abbé Marc-Antoine Loger and his uh, construction that starts from something that is um, functional, um, private uh, and ideal uh, as the so-called primitive art. On the contrary, Fisher is busy with things um, that are not so easy to classify, but roughly speaking, they are all big, ritualistic, and real. So, as mythical as this thing can be, they are all grounded in what at least Fisher believed to be reality. This, this I think, is a very uh, interesting uh, starting point. And the other thing that I think is interesting is that um, Fisher looks for um, the, the, the very title of Fisher book, Entwurf einer historischen Architektur, uh, that can be translated as project of historical architecture, but also essay of historical architecture, sketch of, of, of historical architecture. It's not, as Hans Adelmeier uh, famously wrote, the first ever monumental history of architecture in images, but it is actually an um, investigation in what is historical in architecture. So the link in between a certain civilization and certain architecture is not presupposed, and Architectural manifestation do not depend on the evolution of certain civilization, but they can uh, differ, I think, on two levels. So architecture varies according to different civilization because these civilizations are different, but also because different civilization uh, attribute to architecture a different task. And this is something that I think it's very important today uh, in a condition in which more or less um, while different contexts remain different, um, what is asked from architecture is fundamentally uh, the same all over the world. And the schools uh, of architecture are actually teaching fundamentally the same everywhere. That is a sort of uh, post-international style uh, sort of um, universal um, architecture jargon. Um, Fisher, we see a bit of, of the materials. Fisher also, by selecting only collective and ritualistic objects for his collection, suggests an idea of architecture that is completely different from what uh, Logier later will propose, in the sense that for Fisher, architecture is not a technology of shelter. Uh, its main scope is not protecting from uh, meteorological uh, events, um, but it is, uh, the, the main scope of architecture for Fisher is fundamentally to institutionalize uh, certain collective practices. So in the collection of Fisher, they're fundamentally only monuments. There's no private uh, functional uh, buildings. This is, uh, in a way, very archaic, very far away from our uh, contemporary uh, condition. But at the same time, um, it, it shows a certain preoccupation that have been, for instance, um, the subject of investigation of contemporary artists such as uh, Gerhard Richter. You see here uh, two cases of Fischer and Richter uh, actually depicting the same thing. Although here uh, 
the fissure, the subject of fissure drawing is the cataracts of the Nile, while uh, the subject of uh, Richter's painting is Niagara Falls. Um, what is interesting here uh, is that the, uh, the, the picture on the left by Fisher is part of his collection of monuments. And actually there's no, no building there. Actually it's a piece of nature. Um, and this I think implicitly uh, suggests the definition of architecture as simply the combination of a certain um, cultural interpretation with a certain place. And if these happen precisely enough, even without the um, intermediary of buildings, uh, that's already enough to classify uh, these phenomena as architecture. Uh, th this is, I think, uh, a research that is very similar to uh, Richter's research on memory and collective memory. Uh, it's interesting that Richter always um, paint this thing from um, newspaper clippings, from, from, from photographs. Never, it's never a direct painting of the subject. So Richter didn't go to Niagara Falls to paint en plein air uh, the, the waterfalls. Um, this uh, openness, that is a surprising openness for, for someone who was actually the, um, the state architect of the Habsburg Emperor. So, in a way, a pretty conservative uh, position to occupy, um, is reflected in the variety of the um, phenomena that Fisher describes with, with great accuracy, uh, as, as, as accurate as he could. Here we see the, the captions of his uh, engraving of uh, Mecca. And we see also uh, all of his uh, investigations uh, of Chinese and Siamese um, buildings and uh, rituals. Uh, very similar in a way to um, a book by Bernard and Picard, the Ceremonie uh, Religieuse uh, de, de tout le monde, if I quote it correctly, uh, which is a book of 1720, published in between 1723 and 17, I think, 37. So that, that means two years after, uh, that is a sort of Protestant leaning counterpart of. Uh, Fisher book. Uh, this could be very interesting, um, let's say, conversation, but I think I should uh, try to be brief. Uh, so I will not discuss uh, this um, issue uh, related to, uh, to Loger and to a possible critique of what uh, Rossi, Aldo Rossi called the naive functionalism. Uh, a critique that is fundamentally a critique of the Robinsonian liberal subject that is projected at the beginning of architectural history uh, by, um, by Loger. And I think it, there's a possible critique of this architecture, modern architecture lineage that is parallel to the critique that uh, Maus, uh, Polanyi, um, Marx to a certain extent, uh, developed of the um, origin of economy according to liberal theorists. And I think there is a possible lineage uh, in um, recent architecture that starts with late Gideon, late Le Corbusier, and of course uh, Rossi and uh, Rem Colas, particularly Rem Colas of the Lears New York more than uh, other periods of his production. Um, the last thing I want to mention is that if we think of Fisher book and we imagine to redo the same operation today, we would actually find uh, materials for a possible, uh, let's say, uh, argument. But this 
uh, materials we are actually not searching. Uh, for instance, these two things uh, share uh, a bizarre, uh, let's say, uh, property that is that they were made exactly at the same time. So in 1927, while Ms. van der Rohe and Le Corbusier were designing Weissenhof in Stuttgart, uh, got a, a, by the way, terrible sculpture uh, of Danish uh, descent uh, called Gatzenbargum started to explode the dynamite blows that were necessary to carve the ads of the four president in uh, the Black Hills of South Dakota uh, at Mount Rushmore. So these two things happen at the same time and actually in history of architecture people speak only about that and in popular culture only this is present which is to me singular. Also because if we would apply the criteria used by um, architects uh, until the Baroque era, um, I would say everybody would agree that what is interesting is this and not that. And actually, I don't, I don't think Mount Rushmore is necessarily more interesting than Weissenhof, but probably we could attribute a little bit of attention also to that. So one of the things that now I just mentioned is that we will try in these next years here at the Gestaltungslehre and, and Design is to try to develop an atlas uh, somehow similar to, to the one made by Fisher of contemporary things that are just big, ritualistic um, and uh, actually existing and things a bit like these, I, I don't think I even need to mention what, what they are, but I think some of them are also quite interesting in architectural terms, and I think they deserve some attention. And maybe by paying attention to these things, we can also um, mildly adapt the um, presupposition of, uh, of the architecture we will also produce. Uh, I think I took too much time. I think we will have a little bit more time because unfortunately Jamel Cluj could not reach us today, so there's a little bit more time in the morning session. I would like to thank the speakers once again, and I will announce them now so that it could be faster later. So in the morning session, uh, immediately after uh, myself, uh, we will have the intervention by Martin Del Beke, who uh, is an architecture historian and professor at ETH Zurich. Then an intervention by Dubravka Sekulic, who is architecture theorist and teaches at the um, University of London, if I'm not wrong. Uh, and then we will have intervention by Caroline Van Eyck, who is an architecture historian from Cambridge University. And finally, an intervention by Sam Jacob, who is an architect and a professor at the um, University of Chicago, and actually also a professor here for a little seminar at our um, department. Thank you very much, and I leave immediately the word to, uh, to Martin.